In this video, we're going to use VMM to create a new tenant network for our software defined network controlled cluster. So first we're going to start by going into VM networks under VMs and services, and we're going to give it a name, in this case, tenant-vm network. We're going to select our logical network. Now we select our Hyper-V network virtualization provider address space, so that logical network. We can then isolate it, and in this case, I'm going to create some subnets. So this is a very similar process to what you see when you do things in Azure, when you create a virtual network. Same concept here. We're creating a virtual network where everything in that virtual network can communicate with itself. Can't communicate to the outside world. So think of this like an island. So I've created a default subnet. I'm creating a front end subnet. And next I'll create a back end subnet. So same normal things that you would expect. Uh, proper CIDR notation is important. Notice I can also encrypt these networks if I choose to. So I can use end-to-end -end encryption in SDN. I'm then prompted to give a connectivity, which we'll talk about later. But after I've deployed my SLB muxes in my gateways, I can then connect through layer three, GRE, or IPsec tunnels, or NAT. So after you've created the VM network, this information is sent to the network controller and communicated to the network controller's database. And then in turn, through that southbound API, connected to the OVSDB database on each one of the Hyper-V hosts at the vSwitch level. Uh, next in VMM, I'm going to create an IP pool. So I'm going to create a front-end static IP pool. And I'm going to make sure that I connect to the right VM network and the right VM subnet for this. So in my case, I'm connecting to my front end subnet. I could choose to change the range or limit some VIPs, uh, provide DNS. I'm not going to because I'm going to use iDNS. We'll talk about that later. But you see, that easy. I created a subnet for my front end. I'll quickly create one for the back end as well. So this is how I can assign my virtual machines to that VNet. And then I'm using the IP pool to handle the IP distribution for me. If I had an IPAM, I could use the Windows IPAM to connect it to VMM to update the IPAM database as well. So we'll go to my virtual machines. We'll go to the properties of the first VM. And we're going to select the hardware configuration. And we're going to connect it to a VM network just like we would any other VM network. So we'll select the tenant VM network. Then we'll select the subnet, so in our case front end. And it's automatically going to put it into the IP pool and give it a static IP out of that pool. So we'll go ahead and say OK to this and make that change. We'll go ahead and do the same change on TWeb02 so you can see the same process. Now, in this case, these are my web servers, so I'm putting them in the front end subnet. <clears throat> if I wanted to put an application server or a database server, I'd probably put those into other subnets to give traditional um, application segmentation. Right. So once that's done, I'm going to power on the VMs, but we can watch it in jobs, right? So the job is happening at a PowerShell level, and we can see exactly what's happening. It's just simply putting it onto that VNIC, right? So what's happening is the network controller is assigning a virtual network adapter to that VM and then assigning that in the OVSDB database on the Hyper-V host as associated to that tenant network. So it's a lot of work in the background. This is exactly what's happening in Azure as well. When you create a virtual network adapter in Azure, it's creating a separate resource object in Azure for that virtual network adapter. So uh, TWeb01 is running, so let's go ahead and connect to it. And I'm going to show you that we have IP addresses and that once we turn on the firewall, uh, we will be able to communicate between these two servers on the fly. So let's open up PowerShell here in this VM. And notice it already saw the network, and it's asking for the desirable profile settings for the network since I'm in a uh, desktop experience Windows Server 2019. So we'll open up PowerShell. I'm going to copy the command I have, run it. Oh, uh, I forgot to put in the dashes for the parameters. Whoops. All right, let me fix that real quick. Easy mistake. Okay, so we've set the firewall rule. I'm going to go ahead and set this on TWeb02 as well, just so we can have it. But notice the IP addresses is visible here in VMM. 
So 100.18 and 100.19, because they're in the same subnet. So if I ping it, not quite getting the response yet, but we'll see it come up here in a second. One more time, just for good measure. And there you can see it. Both VMs are communicating across to each other. Not a problem. So that's exactly how we can create a tenant VM network.